Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad free over at inspireddisorder.com slash plus. This is The Ray Taylor Show. Swipe up episode 216 of the show where I share my opinions whether you like them or not. Let's get into it. Starting off with this first story, just something that you would hope that you wouldn't be reading straight out of the futuristic dystopian world that you would see in sci-fi movies like the terminator uh we have this story san francisco will allow police to deploy robots that kill uh supervisors in san francisco voted tuesday to give city police the ability to use potentially lethal remote controlled robots in emergency situations following an emotionally charged debate that reflected division on the politically liberal board over support for law enforcement. Uh, my position politically, for those that are new to this show maybe, uh, but I am very far left. Very far left. I am very much against police uh, in many situations. They don't really do the job that they are there to do. They do not protect They do not serve. In most instances, the police will just avoid doing any work and will take advantage of the historical benefit that's been given to them to literally get away with murdering unarmed men, women, and children on a regular basis, Uh, maiming, murdering, abusing, harassing uh, people citizens innocent people right they're supposed to be this idea of innocent until proven guilty in a court of law uh when a police officer shoots you in the back of the head uh there's no court judge jury due process involved uh with a public execution by somebody receiving public funds uh and the fact that This is a liberal board that was having a debate over whether or not robots should be able to kill people really shows why I'm more far left than just a cheerleader for the liberals in general, right? When it comes to Joe Biden, I would way rather have him than Trump, obviously. I would way rather have a piece of shit that came out of my dog's ass than a fascist uh, former reality TV show host that has filed bankruptcy on every business that he has pretended to run. Uh, But it doesn't mean that I'm going to be a cheerleader for him. I'm not going to be buying Joe, uh, Sleepy Joe merch or anything like that. Be very critical of a lot of things that he's doing, which... He's doing things I do not agree with currently. And uh, that goes for a lot of, you know, a lot of liberal politicians, which are still in the pockets of wealthy people, of corporations. And that is due more to the the corruption in our system as a whole. The effect, the fact that, uh, you know, corporations and millionaires and billionaires can effectively purchase uh politicians pay for politicians and uh to get their way uh and that's evident in you know politicians that should be for the people uh allowing robots to kill people shows that they probably don't have a problem with the police killing people as it is uh because you know if we have robots that you can program not to violate the human rights and unalive people. Uh, If you have the opportunity to avoid that via programming, then uh, you would want that if, if you're against people being killed by police. But if you're fighting to allow police, the only thing this does is eliminates the any potential danger for a police officer, which that is the excuse police officers use. Right. Any time a police officer kills somebody, all they have to say is that they feared for their life. And it doesn't matter why they don't have to have a, a like a credible 
reason, right? A person could have a lighter, a phone, candy, or just nothing in their hands whatsoever. They could be eating McDonald's in their car in a parking lot, and all a cop has to say is, I felt fear for my life, and that's why I had to execute this citizen in public. And unless that becomes national, national news, uh, chances are they'll get away with it. Maybe they'll get unpaid suspension, whatever. But chances are prosecution, cops rarely get, uh, rarely have to live by the same laws and rules that every other human has to. Murder, when it's applied to police, is accepted in a lot of cases. And when you have a story like this where they're saying where politicians are arguing in favor of the police killing citizens has nothing to do with these robots feeling fearing for their lives it is just these politicians want to be able to kill people that they feel like killing or that they the police feel like killing right and i'm sure their arguments are Oh, but what if the robot, what if there's a, a, a gun battle, right? What if there's this, this uh, battle at the OK Corral kind of like f this delusional fantasy of how, how tragedies work in real life, confusing that with movies? And what if we deployed robots? Wouldn't we want robots to, like I'm sure they said schools, what if there's a mass shooting, right? We all saw how cops did absolutely nothing for almost an hour, right? Oh, what, like 400 plus uh, armed law enforcement officers in Uvalde, Texas doing nothing for an hour, literally actively keeping people out that want to stop the shooter, right? The, the police officers, the armed police officers keep the people that may try to stop this mass shooter from killing children actively helping the shooter keeping them out right that i'm sure was one of their arguments like well clearly the cops are useless in a lot of situations right so what if we deployed these robots what if we had robots in school right wouldn't we want the police officers to have the ability to tell that robot to kill the shooter okay in this fictional reality where that situation happens wouldn't the robot also just be able to, like, stop the shooter? In a, like, aren't there other means for a robot who has no fear of death to incapacitate somebody who's going to shoot, right? And clearly is a sign that they have no desire to fix the underlying problem, in which is the access to the tool used to commit such atrocities right clearly that's something that they don't have a, a opinion on trying to regulate or stop in any meaning in meaningful way right we still want they still want gun manufacturers to profit off of making tools that are specifically used to end human life at an effortless ability to end human life right so we need to have this this robots right and of course you'd want the robot to to kill to take somebody out that's a danger right because we're not going to stop somebody who wants to commit mass shooting but we want to be able to kill the killer right because that's why people buy guns because they think you know guns don't stop bullets they just have this idyllic fantasy that they're going to somehow shoot the shooter before the shooter shoots them Right. Or they're going to have this magical combat ability in a in a matter of splits moments of seconds when something goes down, they're just going to turn into John McClane and have no no problems performing like crazy maneuvers like an action movie to save the world. Right. I don't know. It's disgusting. The I mean, we've seen the the robot dogs strapped with automatic rifles. 
obviously there's the the whole arms expo that happened where they had a rocket launcher strapped to one of those robot dogs uh there's stories that police departments because they have so much money right they're they're overwhelmed with how much money they're given these police departments that they have the resources to invest in robots right god forbid we get books for kids or food for hungry people or homes for those that are unhoused or medical attention for those that need medical services mental health services god forbid we spend any money to actually help humans in this society that the budgets of these police departments are so flush with cash overflowing with funding that they can afford to deploy robots to do the killing for them right because we don't want our police officers to get PTSD from murdering somebody in person, right? For unaliving somebody with their own hands pulling the trigger, right? We don't want to have to pay for a police officer to have to go to therapy for murdering somebody. So we'll just disconnect them from that murder by having them control a robot instead, right? We've, we've done trials of that in the military using drones, like, they know. They know what that separation is like. Completely different. It's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous, you know? And that's why I'm far left, because even the liberal board, I mean, if this was a conservative board that was in charge of San Francisco, they would have had robots yesterday, right? But, of course, generally... Republican-led cities and states are very horrible with money. They don't really make money. They tend to be on the welfare tip more than anywhere else when it comes to uh, red states and red cities. Uh, very mismanaged. And uh, so, the, you know, there would never really be a successful city that generates the abundance of money like San Francisco if it were rent run by conservatives uh but if by some stretch like if something crazy happened and just all of a sudden they got elected uh, they elected a bunch of you know republican people to they would have been they would have been there already if they had that kind of cash like oh yeah let's do this <laughs> like i want to they would be so excited to be killing homeless people right and it's like you're not it's like no and they don't have to worry about you know, a robot going to jail. They don't have to worry about a robot, you know, having to get therapy because they murdered somebody. You know, there's probably legal loopholes because it's a robot committing murder where they probably can avoid a lot of lawsuits, you know. All they have to say is, oh, it malfunctioned, sorry. Right? Meaning while now they have to fork over millions of dollars every time a police officer violates somebody's human rights which they do all the time you know just disgusting and just a sign that like tip of the spear right this is the only the beginning you're going to see this more and more it'll just be interesting to see how many people die by robots before this becomes a national conversation and it just shows that, you know, humans are meaningless to the the government, right? They so much of the government is still funded by corporations and millionaires that the majority of humans are worthless to them. We are livestock to them. We are expendable, right? We do not matter to them. We do not have the same worth that a billionaire has because we can't afford to buy off politicians. But then there's, you know, the the progressive Democrats, right? The Bernie Sanders kind, the the uh, AOC kinds, right? Like there's some there's a few in there sprinkled that actually want to do good stuff that want to that actually fight for people. And they're not perfect either. But like if we're talking about like levels 
a gradation of a spectrum of type of politician that goes from like the most fascist to the most progressive. I am as far left as possible. Although on that, I'm what, right? I don't know. Let's take a little break from the show to promote. I figured out a way on my website to offer prints for every single painting. So if you go to a painting, you can buy the original painting or you can buy a print for everything. Artwork that you don't want to spend $100 plus on 9 by 12 inch ink painting on paper. $100 for the original one of a kind piece of artwork. Paintings range in price depending on their size. The 8 by 10 print, $20 available in the store at inspireddisorder.com and now let's get back to the show let's move on some bad news also uh kind of bad news for me bad news i'm not really for me it's but it's it's disappointing news because i spent so much time talking about this show and uh i'm almost finished with it but this last this next story uh from deadline the midnight club has been canceled uh, by Netflix after one season. I am one episode away from completing my episode by episode recap of The Midnight Club, a show that I enjoy, but I kind of understand why it didn't catch on necessarily. It's definitely doing a lot of things, right? It's kind of an anthology show, but also kind of not. It's a it's a YA show where the the overall umbrella story that's that's being told with Alanka and the Paragon and these rituals and Brightcliff is kind of one it brings up and is so related to what a big portion of our society is like was like during the pandemic is still like uh, this confirmation bias that that Alanka has uh, just assuming and having faith in the fact that this ritual that she's uncovered is the answer to curing herself and curing the other people, despite no proof of that and constantly being proven wrong. Um, and there's the person, the natural path person, who's also kind of we're finding out a cult member. Uh, who has been pumping her ego, convincing her that she's on the right path. And it's kind of a bummer. It's kind of a bummer that our main character is going down this, this path that is so related to so many people that I'm sure have been cut out of other people's lives, right? Family members that have gone down the ivermectin rabbit hole that have... Uh, Chosen to listen to stand-up comedians like Joe Rogan's medical advice. Uh, Joe Rogan, who books the guests on his show and chose scientists that uh, will back up his assumptions of things. Uh, a guy who profits and owns a supplement company. Uh, a guy who has... He's uh, perpetuated pseudoscience in the past trying to legitimize a scientist who was uh, an AIDS denier trying to get this AIDS denier scientist uh, debates with legitimate scientists which for months which he wasn't able to do right somebody that has a history of the pseudoscience type of stuff a guy that's best friends with Alex Jones one of the most disgusting humans on on the planet who just gave his platform to uh, a white supremacist, anti-Semitic Kanye West, you know, right? There's a lot of things in our life that we've, people we've had to cut out of our life that have this confirmation bias, that have this, like, faith in this pseudoscience. And to have that in somebody, in our main character of a show is kind of tough. It's kind of tough despite the fact that Alonka means well. She wants to heal her friends who all have, you know, terminal diseases. Uh, and it introduced the world to Ruth Cod, which I hope this is a springboard for her to do more acting, if that's what she chooses to do. But one of my favorite characters, definitely, 
Uh, Mike Flanagan, a great director. I love all of his horror films. Uh, somebody that created what many people consider to be a masterpiece in Midnight Mass. I don't necessarily consider it to be, but I can see why people would. For, for this show to be the follow-up to that, kind of a bummer. But also this show, like I said, it's trying to do, it's trying to be an anthology series, right? All these kids get together at midnight and tell stories. And while they're telling these stories, they're acted out by the actors of the show. So it's like, you know, there's stories within the story. Each episode has a unique story told by the kids. And it had the overarching story that is the thing that ties this anthology together is interesting but i think it suffers from the fact that it's trying to be it's a really interesting way to do an anthology series but the stories aren't like some of them are better than others and the stories that are told illuminate aspects of the character that's telling the story which is a very interesting thing all of the stories are based on books that were written by the same guy that wrote the Midnight Club that the show is based on. So it's like it's like structurally the ideas that they they used to create the show are amazing. But at the same time, I was excited to see where the show went. It wasn't like I could see how it would be kind of difficult as a show because that overarching story kind of stalls a bit, right? It doesn't move very much. There's a bit of a cliffhanger at the end like we're kind of see that like oh there's there's definitely more to be mined from the history of brightcliff with dr stanton with julia jane with the good humor people with the you know the paragon and and all of those things there's like a lot of questions that still need to be answered after the first season which I feel like it didn't do enough to answer any questions throughout the first season. And that's probably why it didn't catch on. Right. Which is a bummer. It's a bummer. I'm still a huge fan of Mike Flanagan. All of his movies are great. His shows are great. Uh, whatever show he does, I'm sure it'll be great as well. I just feel like maybe it was trying. The idea was better than the execution. Maybe. Um, and Wednesday is amazing, <laughs> right? That's a show that's great. I'm, I'm stoked for more seasons of it. And this one I enjoyed. I'm doing the episode-by-episode episode recap. I have one episode left, which is a bummer to get this news. It's like, well, you know, all of these questions that I hoped to be answered in future seasons is not going to happen. The overall idea of the show, how it's like there's going to be like this revolving door of kids that come through – as kids die, new kids come in. Uh, it's going to be like this refillable thing where there's going to be this new newness with each season. So the life of this, se this show would have been fun and interesting to see. And maybe if given another season, it would have like caught on more. So it's a bummer to see that uh, The Midnight Club is canceled. I enjoyed it. But... It is what it is. The first time I've done an episode-by-episode recap of a show that's been canceled. Dave is still going. New season of Dave's coming out. some point, there's going to be another season of Ted Lasso. Uh, of the Midnight Mass is a miniseries, so I didn't expect that to be going. Um, Squid Game has another season coming. Uh, Severance has another season coming. Some great shows that I've talked about. And this one was a fun one to do, uh, but... It'll be interesting to to see what I do next <laughs> because I don't know when a new season of the stuff I've already done. Like Ted Lasso was supposed to have come out already. Hasn't come out. Uh, third season. And uh, I know Dave has started filming. I know I want to say Severance has started filming as well, but maybe not. Um, I mean, Squid Game is, I don't think it started, but in development still. I don't know good stuff uh but a bummer with uh the midnight club let's move on to just another disgusting story involving the police uh this is a former police officer former law enforcement worker catfished a teen 
uh, then murdered three family members in Riverside. So this guy was from, I don't know where, he wasn't from Riverside, San Bernardino, wasn't from California. A former police officer uh, catfished a teenager online, drove out here, right, groomed her, drove out here to California, Southern California, to San Bernardino, uh, to Riverside, and then killed her family. Uh, and, you know, the reason why I added this story not only to just show the type of people that become police officers, right? Um, the the true threat to children, police officers, kind of a big one. Uh, not only this example, but there's plenty of examples of police officers killing kids, uh, abusing kids mentally, sexually, physically, uh, and getting away with it. There's stories all the time of, of cops getting away with doing horrible things to young people. Uh, but of course, all the conservatives only really care about drag shows. They think that's like the hotbed for uh, child abuse, right? Not police officers and definitely not churches, right? Where, where it's like so common that there's literally jokes about priests molesting kids. Historically, it's so well known that there's jokes about it but now they have to take their assault rifles to drag shows because somebody living a lifestyle that's different from theirs that's their the thing they're scared of that's what these fragile gun owner conservative people these people that have like so little like self-worth that anybody living a lifestyle that's even mildly different than theirs is uh considered a threat and will easily latch on to any propaganda that labels these outcasts, these different types of people, these outsiders from the, the binary delusion that they live in. Any, any time that they're labeled as a threat, they will do no research to back it up, but show up armed to the teeth uh, to defend the kids against the violent, <laughs> the violent uh, people dressed in drag. And I criticize this guy, right? Criticize this guy because he's a cop. Not surprising. This is not a, sadly, not a very unique story. And as I do, as I find whenever I comment on these news articles on Instagram, that there's people that get offended. I, I forget to put my trigger warnings, right? I forget to put like trigger warning for the black back the blue people right if you if you pretend to worship uh and support the police and everything that they do you may be offended that i'm not a fan of the police and am aware of what they do to people regularly and there's this person that's c clearly just uh, just delusional from the pop propaganda she was raised on arguing with me saying i'm wrong <laughs> like like I like I don't know what to tell you, right? I like I don't understand these these people that like feel the need like I'm commenting on the story. They don't like my comment. So instead of just leaving it alone, right? They're going through the comments on this story and when they find a comment that they disagree with, they choose to engage, right? As if their disagreement with me is going to change my mind, it's going to be like I'm going to get an epiphany because this some back the blue person is like, yeah, you're wrong. Cops are amazing. But that's not the person. That's like common, right? These people that just blindly, they regurgitate whatever memes populate their, their whole personality. Like they, they have no personality. You go to their, their account if it's not a private burner account. You see, like, it's usually populated with memes. Like, that's the only thing they post, all these right-wing memes. That's how they educate themselves about everything, right? They get these memes from their, the right-wing people that they follow, their, their echo chamber of people. And they regurgitate all of these things that they, they memorize from all these memes that are basically their personality, right? They have zero else to them 
nothing else in their life is as important to share on their social media than all of these these right wing propaganda memes. And they all say the same thing. And it's like, I don't like I don't know what you you're you think you're doing. You're not winning. You're not going to win. In most cases, I just block you. Right. Maybe I'll go back and forth if I'm feeling bored that day. I have no problem blocking you. But the funny thing that happened is I, which I'll talk about tomorrow, I had a thing. I had a, my, the podcast numbers for the show had a funny number. It was 66,696 subscribers, right? 66696. So, I took a phone, uh, a screenshot of that number of my my podcast subscribers, and posted it up on Instagram, and made reference to the two s- numbers that are funny in that, or you know noticeable. Six six six, obviously, and sixty nine. Right, fun sixty nine. Oh, I mean, you can't you can't pass up a sixty nine joke. If it was four twenty sixty nine, I would have done the same thing. I'm not like the the funny thing is right, and a Christian got very mad right Th- she obviously disagreed she's a back to blue type of person because that's you know if you're if you're a cr- crazy christian person then you're you're probably on board with all the other crazy things right She probably has a case of ivermectin under the sink just in case she gets covid right, but she got upset right disagreed but before she commented on my thing which she never talked to me she talked to this other person who was commenting on my comment saying that i'm satanic right don't listen to me because i'm satanic and if you go look at my instagram page you will see in my story you will see in his story that he worships the devil he has a post with the number 666 in it right and this post Right. I was proud of this post. Right. First, proud of the number. I'm happy with the subscribers as they're growing up. Apparently, Satan has been good to me. Right. I put, you know, the f- I had a, a gif of the 666 emoji spinning around on fire. I had uh, hands doing 69. Right. Because 69 is a funny number. I got fire emojis coming through. I had this really cool uh, pentagram with uh, Baphomet's head, the goat skull on it. Uh, spinning around, right, on a GIF spinning around. I used the Jay-Z song Lucifer, right? Sadly, it was produced by Kanye West, but, you know, song Lucifer, it's a cool song, Jay-Z, whatever. Had that playing, right? I was a well-produced story. I was very happy with my story that I produced for, for Instagram, which I'll show, maybe I'll show it now if I remember in post, or I'll show it, uh, in tomorrow's episode, but, or in uh, Ray's days. But it's hilarious. It is so funny when Christians call me like a Satanist or I worship Satan. As if, like, I believe in the bad guy of a story I don't believe in, right? They worship Harry Potter, and because I believe the Harry Potter stories to be a work of fiction, they think I worship Voldemort. Right. I don't think the Bible is real. I I believe the Bible to be a work of fiction. I don't think it's a document documentation an authentic documentation of events that have happened. It is a book that was written many hundreds of years after the events that are depicted in the book is a book that's been translated multiple times. It's a book that's been edited a bunch of times. It's a book that was not written in English to begin with. So there's language translation that's happened. It's a book that's been regurgitated and, and stuff. It's, it's, it's stories in this book that were in many ways plagiarized from older books, older religions. The majority of Christian holidays are repurposed pagan holidays like there is very little authenticity to the christian religion right very little it is it is like the the legacy sequel version of religion when it comes that's like people who think you know the f- the force awakens is the 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 pan ultimate star wars movie right that it's like it's ridiculous 
and like they assume I believe in the bad guy of their book because they disagree with me. But me referring to the devil or Satan is no different to me than referring to Voldemort or uh, Darth Vader or whatever antagonist is in a fictional story. So I thought it was funny, right? She, she does this, don't listen to him. He's a Satan worshiper, right? So then I commented on her thing, right? Because she's having a conversation with somebody that's engaging with my comment, right? So her conversation to this, this her message to this other person who is pretty dumb, just regurgitating dumb propaganda, like I see it because it's under my comment. So w what am I going to do? I'm going to tap on hers and send her a thing just to antagonize her. Hail Satan, all this stuff. I, you know, whatever I could do to scare a Christian Jesus freak, right? Hail Satan. And I also mentioned a thing that I, I actually believe in, that most Christians do the work of the devil in the name of the Lord, right? Most Christians, their actions are more in line with Satan than they are with Jesus. And the reality of Satanists, people that believe in the church of Satan, uh, their actions tend to be more in line with those of Jesus. Right? It, it is insane how backward so many Christians are. Uh, so in her defense of this cop, right? like I'm not wrong because of the things I said. I'm wrong because I believe in Satan, apparently. Right. Whereas uh, I guess cops don't do the thing that God told them not to do. Right. Killing people, abusing people, all that kind of stuff. Anyway. Uh, right. She's in defense of this cop that groomed a kid and killed their family. I'm the Satanist. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And fuck this cop. Fuck. It, that's the thing I, I said with this other person that was just delusional. I shouldn't have even engaged is it like it, she, she's trying to say, oh, this is a rare thing, you know, just a bad apple, that kind of garbage explanation, that garbage way of dismissing every time cops get caught doing something that it's just a, just a small amount, right? It's just a bad apple. Most cops are good. I'm like, my idea, my thought process is if there were so many good cops how on earth do these bad cops constantly do shit? Constantly, right? If there were good cops, then bad cops would be arrested all the time for killing people, for maiming people, for beating people, for kidnapping people, for violating human rights, right? Good cops would stop all of these bad cops from doing things. And in my opinion, if there were any good cops, bad cops wouldn't exist, because those bad cops would be criminals. They would no longer be employed as police officers. But I don't think good cops exist. I think every once in a while a good cop exists, and when they show themselves, if they don't conform to the bad cops, then those good cops either get chewed up and spit out, or they get killed by the bad cops, right? Recently there was a cop who got killed during training, right? And just so happened that that cop that got killed during training was investigating the cops that killed him for crimes that they were committing. Right? It's, they don't exist. Good cops don't exist. Right? And maybe a good person is a police officer, but they are clearly making concessions for being a good person to allow bad cops to pretty much do whatever they want to do. Let's take a little break from the show Whatever. to promote I'm the benefits of Inspired Whatever. Disorder Plus. So you go inspireddisorder.com slash plus. Sign up. $5 a month. You get to binge the full week of the Ray Taylor Show ad free. You get to watch all of the live painting videos I do. You get a special members only discount and deals for all of the artwork and merch that I sell. You also get the complete podcast 
back catalog of every podcast I've ever produced, hundreds of episodes, countless different podcasts. You also get access to my personal blog. A new blog comes out every week. In addition to that, you get my creative writing that I'm releasing. You also get access to asking me anything. 14 years of experience podcasting. I've been creating art my entire life. I've been using Photoshop since middle school. And you can contact me to ask me questions about that or anything else. So those are the benefits for signing up for Inspired Disorder Plus. And now let's get back to the show. Move on to the last story. Last but not least. I just thought that was funny. Elon Musk has suspended Kanye West on Twitter less than 10 days after reinstating him. It is. I'm glad that I'm no longer on Twitter. Right. No desire to be on that garbage fire. But it is fun to watch this platform completely go down in flames exposing how absolutely stupid elon musk is right to spend 44 billion dollars on a social media platform that was not profitable before he purchased it to completely upend all of the things put in place to protect the validity of the person tweeting with the verification check mark the a guy who pretends that he's doing it in the name of free speech that he's pretends to be uh making comedy like alive again on twitter meanwhile he banned countless actual professional comedians who were utilizing the fact that the the verification check mark was meaningless in order to create parody accounts of Elon Musk to make fun of Elon Musk to show what parody is to show Elon what comedy is and for him to instantly ban all of those accounts instantly kind of contradicting the whole statement of comedy is alive again on Twitter literally banning comedians for making fun of him of his precious precious ego but also he's taken a lot of pride in bringing these hate speech people back like kanye like the uh the tate guy like trump right all these people who are banned for hate speech for for pushing misinformation uh these people who's who are using this platform uh for for evil for bad and how fast i mean kanye west descent into madness is is it, it's almost funny to see what will survive longer right which will crash and burn and die f- sooner right kanye west ye whatever whatever his name is yadolf hitler or twitter like which one's going to survive longer because kanye is just going levels and levels tripling down on his anti-semitism you know going on alex jones to talk about his absolute love for adolf hitler you know just really just alex jones giving his hate speech platform to some of the worst hate speech that resulted in like horrible genocide Right. And then you see you're seeing these people like uh, Dave Chappelle play it off like it's no big thing. Right. You're really seeing a lot of people show their true colors. See, like like what they are willing to accept people that they consider friends to do. Right. You saw obviously Joe Rogan. You've seen his his hard right leaning obviously his longtime friendship with with alex jones despite all of the horrible things alex jones has done with his platform uh what he's been finally being punished for right it, it, like making excuses for these horrible people like just labeling their horrible actions as comedy right these are people that that view 
hate speech, racism, misogyny, homophobia, those all that those flavors of hate speech, they all consider to be comedy. Right. And their whole war is wanting to be able to continue saying those things uh, despite society uh, having different ideas of what we should how we should treat each other. And they're angry. They want to go back into a time where they can use racism and misogyny and homophobia as shortcuts to actually writing a joke. Right? There's plenty of comedians that are hilarious that don't need the crutch of racism. They don't need the crutch of homophobia. Right? They're, not, they're not spewing hack hate speech that you would hear middle schoolers say in the 90s on basketball courts. Specifically, I heard plenty of the things that they label as comedy no different than the words said by a middle schooler trying to get a rise out of their opponent. Right? But these are professional comedians that love that crutch. They love that, that hack, that shortcut to make jokes based on hate speech. Right? And they found that right-wing audiences still love that kind of comedy and they're angry that other parts of society don't find it funny and find it like uh, aggressive and hurtful and leads those people to be demonized leads those people to unalive themselves like we understand society so much more and these people just don't want to grow they don't want to evolve they don't actually want to take the time to write jokes they want these shortcuts to use hate speech to be funny and that's what Elon Musk thinks is funny, right? That's what he was saying when he said comedy is back. He means hate speech is back. You can now, you can now say all the racist, homophobic, misogynist stuff. And right-wingers like Elon Musk will laugh at it and retweet it. But Kanye went too far. <laughs> Kanye, like, uh, you know, he didn't... He had no subtlety to uh his his anti-semitism and racism and uh it's it's sad to see how many people are making excuses for him it's sad i've never liked kanye i i it's blown my mind for as long as he's been around that people consider him to be a a, a genius he's he's always seemed like aside from after hurricane katrina when he said uh president bush doesn't care about black people Right. The type of Kanye that exists today is light years past, like like George Bush would probably go on TV and say Kanye doesn't believe in or doesn't like black people or doesn't care about black people. It's amazing, which is actually funny <laughs> to bring up another uh, interaction I had. I, I made a comment on uh, Kanye. I don't remember what it was about Kanye. And this black actress in L.A. is clearly a fan of Kanye. And she said that she loves the moves that he's making and wish more men made those moves uh, and that black people were the original Jewish people. Which, you know, I agree that uh, Jewish people historically... And black people historically have been treated absolutely disgusting by people of my skin color. I'm well aware of that. I'm well aware of the privilege that I've grown up with being a white person, not having to deal with the social hurdles that people of color have to deal with. And I have no idea what it's like for uh, people of my family and my, my race or whatever, my background being slaughtered, right, grouped together put in concentration camps and genocided out of existence. But it's amazing that she is defending a guy saying like his moves are like unique. And I replied to her, which ended up getting that reply got taken down and Instagram apparently doesn't like me bringing this up. But I reminded her that, Men have been making moves like Kanye forever. 
they just wear white hoods or have swastikas on their arm. Right. But that's everything Kanye is doing has been part of white supremacy and anti-Semitism forever. So it's not like he's doing anything novel. He just happens to be a black dude saying those things, which historically black communities have been used by white supremacy groups. They've been used and fed propaganda in order to demonize the Jewish people, right? That's historically, they, the white supremacist groups would label the Jews as the reason w why black people have this injustice in their life. Like that, those targets have been put historically on Jewish people through white supremacist propaganda. So what Kanye's doing is just being vocal about propaganda that's been around, that's been disseminated by white supremacist groups for a long time, right? It's, it's not a new thing. And it's just propaganda, which the majority of conservative talking points is linked to and a version of flavor of white supremacist propaganda. Right. That's why he's so easily welcomed in the conservative circles. That's why Trump is so easily welcomed in the conservative circles, because he spews and regurgitates all of these white supremacist propaganda stuff. Actively, actively. And that's what Kanye's doing. Right. He just happens to be somebody that a lot of people listen to for some reason, which I think is ridiculous. Um, so, yeah, just another failure in Elon Musk's inability to turn a failing business into a worse failing business and i'm sure what he's doing in some way will allow him to save money in taxes like uh, every failure that a millionaire or billionaire has which seems to be constant right you look at donald trump's track record with success in business and he's pretty horrible at it but they know how the loopholes work with taxes and and everything like they're living in a completely different reality where i'm sure all of these failures that elon musk is experiencing will in some way benefit him in the end and it's that's just how ridiculous our society is but that's it let me do some shout outs and we'll get out of here shall we shout out to puppity shout out to deadline and shout out ktla5 news wow this is a long episode most importantly, shout out to you. New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on YouTube and everywhere our podcasts are found. Binge the full week over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at InspiredDisorder.com. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace. Out! Today is the day where you wake up and you realize that everything that you've been dreaming about, everything that you've been wanting, every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real. Dreams can come true. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality.